Hi, everybody. Welcome to day one of our Rockstar Summit. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being on camera and for being interactive with us. You don't have to hide, but we would love to see you. And uh, today we have Melanie Clark. Now, Melanie and I met through Susie Carter, the Susie Carter tribe. We are both business owners. We, um, we want to grow our businesses as all of you guys want to get better and better in your careers and, and attracting money. And I'm so excited because, of course, Melanie just brings it. She brings it. Oh, here's one. Everyone's showing up. Yay. So let's go ahead and, Melanie, if you don't mind, uh, just tell a little bit about yourself and then let's get into your awesome presentation. Let's do it. Hello, everyone. Um, so happy to be here. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for having me. Uh, my name is Melanie Clark, and I am a law of attraction life coach and consultant. Um, I help people attract anything they want to attract in their lives. Um, I work with couples and singles and businesses and children and teenagers because I'm all about energy and helping people feel empowered. And my personal mission is to create what I call a love revolution, where we learn to love ourselves, love our lives, love each other more and more and more. And what I've found is that when we know our personal power, we don't feel in competition with each other. We can just share and love and grow together so I'm all about personal empowerment. And today I'm going to be talking about um, how to reprogram your money thermostat because it's so interesting to me that a lot of people don't like to talk about money. It's kind of a taboo subject, but we all want it. We all need it. We all like it. I know I like money. I love money, right? I love money and money loves me. And so I want to teach you guys today about the energy of money. And I want you to just open your minds, open your hearts. This is a no judgment zone. I want you to just relax and take in what I'm saying. You can take notes if you want to. I know Jennifer's gonna send um, the replay, but I teach what I'm gonna share with you guys today to all of my clients. And um, I just always ask you to just chill, chill. Just kick back, relax, take in what I'm gonna be giving you today. I want you to receive. That is going to be your job in my talk today is just to receive what I'm gonna give you. So let's get into it. So um, when I talk about reprogramming your money thermostat, this is probably gonna be some new information to a lot of you because a lot of you probably didn't know you had a money thermostat. So this is what you're gonna walk away with today. You're gonna um, learn why you keep getting the same financial results, no matter how hard you work. That was one I learned. Um, you're gonna learn what new behaviors you must adopt to match um, more money. And then you're going to learn how to rewrite your money story. So you're going to reprogram this part of yourself. So I want to give you some ideas. I want you to think about this as I'm talking. Number one, money's unlimited. You guys, there's so much money in the world. Like we tend to think like there's the only the amount of money that we work and get in our paycheck. Or other people have the money. Or other companies have money, right? but money is unlimited. There's so much of it. The other thing that I want you to recognize is money is energy. It's just an energy. That's why it's called currency. Did you ever, did you ever realize that? It's called currency because it's an energy. Money is attracted to itself. So the more money you have, the more you attract. The other thing is money, money comes to you however you look at it. So if you tell yourself it's hard to make money or it's hard to keep money, money loves you so much, it's gonna go, okay, that's the outcome that I'm gonna give you, okay? Um, the other thing is because money's an energy, your energy and the energy around you is gonna dictate how much money you attract. So here's something that most people don't know. If you have a lot of clutter around you, then you are repelling money because money is a clean energy and it needs to flow. So you want to make your workspace, you want to have things around you that are really clear and really, really clean. Um, the other thing is your focus is everything. So I'm going to be asking you to pay attention to your self-talk. 
What are the stories you tell about money? What are you focused on? Are you focused on the lack of money? And then the other thing is money is an exchange of love. It really is an exchange of love. Oh my God, I love I love business so much. Like you guys are gonna watch me get hyped. I told Jennifer, my nose is probably gonna run. You're gonna see me wiping my nose because I get so excited when I talk about this. Money's an exchange of love. Think about this. Like this is just amazing to me. We come up with an idea, a product, a service that we're passionate about. Then we share it with the world and they give us their money that they worked for and earned and then they share it with us. Can you see that exchange of love? Isn't that beautiful? Like, it just gives me chills. It just makes me so excited. Now, the other piece about money that most people don't recognize is you have to work on your ability to receive it. Now, I'll tell you this. We are all programmed to have so many beliefs, and most of your beliefs, my loves, were given to you in your childhood. You didn't even ask for them. You had no say, you just showed up and your parents and your teachers and your community said, here's your beliefs, here's your beliefs, here's your beliefs, here's your beliefs, and then you just took them. They're just thoughts, they're just stories. And then you attracted things that made that real for you. And one of the stories that most of us have been told, like I'll give you a couple of them, is who's heard this before? It's better to give than receive. Who's heard that? Constantly, right? No, 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 let's let's think about that for a minute. Is it? Is it really? So if you think about how do you feel when you give, you feel great, don't you? Doesn't that feel incredible to give to someone? It's a beautiful, beautiful thing to do. But when someone tries to give to you and you go, no, 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 no. It's okay. No, I know I'm fine. No, it's okay. No, no, I'm fine. Oh no then you're preventing them from having the joy of giving. So giving and receiving are the same energy. So you have to be able to receive if you want more money. So I'm gonna tell you guys a quick story. I used to go, I used to work in downtown LA and I have amazing girlfriends and we'd go to happy hour. And every time we would go to happy hour, I would pay. Even if I didn't want to, I would pay. <laughs> I'd be making sure I had enough money on my credit card so I could pay <laughs> because I wanted to be a good friend and I wanted to look important and I didn't want them to know that I struggled financially. So I would pay. And one day one of my friends said to me, she said, do you know, you never let me take care of you. You never let us pay for you. You always pay for us and you're preventing us from loving you. Oh, what? I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that by me not receiving, I was blocking their love. So I hope you guys, I hope you guys can receive that. I hope that you can receive that. You have to be able to receive, which is why I started this with, I want you to be able to receive today. Okay. So um, I love brain science, quantum physics, law of attraction. So we're going to talk about the brain a little bit. So we all have an internal thermostat for every topic in our life. Uh, love, money, friendships, business, every part of our lives, right? And this part of our brain is called the psycho-cybernetic mechanism. And the psycho-cybernetic mechanism's job is to keep our static reality in place. Because as human beings, if we change our mind too quickly, it makes us feel crazy. Kind of like the pandemic, right? When the pandemic happened and everything shut down, it was like our reality changed so quickly. It made us feel off center and a little bit crazy, right? And we had to, we had to adjust. So this part of our brain keeps everything static for us. So that when we wake up every day, we know who we are, we know what we believe, and we can be ourselves. So where you're set is what you get. And what I mean by that is all the things that you learned in childhood are in your brain. So I like to think of it like, I um, told you guys, I told you my nose was gonna start to run. Uh, I like to think of it as uh, the old fashioned filing cabinet. You guys remember the filing cabinet with the drawer, you pull the drawer out and had all the files in there. So every experience you've had from birth 
till this exact moment, there's a file in your brain for. And as we move through life as human beings, what we do is we subconsciously go look in those files. Oh, how do I feel about money? Hold on, let me pull my money file. Let's see, money doesn't grow on trees. Uh, you have to work hard for money. Um, it's better to give and then to receive. We all have a lot of the same files, right? So what happens is as we go through life and we look at those files, we subconsciously expect to have the outcome that matches our files. So if we have a whole bunch of files that say, I don't deserve money. Oh, that's another big one, right? Like we tie, um, we tie our worthiness to money. Like if I'm good, if I'm a hard worker, if I'm successful, I'll have a lot of money. So that I'm not worthy. I saw someone, yes, I'm not worthy if I don't have money. That's a file. Delete that sucker. Okay, wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll come back to deleting the files. Um, sorry, I get ahead of myself. I get excited about this. <laughs> so you have all these files. <laughs> and, and Melanie, if, if I can, like you're getting me excited. My nose is about to run. So if you guys... <laughs> can all contribute in the chat you know karen is going on We're, we've got some great things going in the chat yeah it's true money doesn't grow on trees my filing cabinet personally feels very full at times and yeah that <laughs> worthiness it's it's so true melanie good keep going girl. Yeah. You, you were yes about. it's true okay so so then you you have all these files right you're subconsciously pulling the files and then what happens is we get set there and we don't realize that we're set, so we block ourselves. So that's just one part of the brain, okay? So that's your thermostat. Where you get set is where you, what you get. So now think about this, a thermostat in your home, if you set it at say 75 degrees and it gets too hot in your home and you want some cool air, it's winter time, and you open the windows, the house will cool off, but it's just a matter of time before that thermostat kicks in and takes it right back to the 75 degrees. Well, we're the same way. And most people are trying to solve their money problems on the outside, they're opening windows, instead of going within and reprogramming their internal money thermostat. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about your internal money thermostat I'm gonna share with you how it works, and then you're gonna do the work on changing your money story or creating whatever money story that you want, which most people don't even know that they can do that. So why would you have ever created a money story for yourself? You didn't know. And you can't do better until you know better. So today you're gonna to know a lot better, okay? So I wanna get through all of this because I get excited and, and I'll go long. So Jennifer, if I start going too long, please stop me because I can't help myself. So anyways, so now you have this money thermostat. So I'm gonna teach you a couple of other parts of the brain and how they all work together. So that's your psycho-cybernetic mechanism. Then you have another part of your brain called the reticular activation system. And this works with your eyes. Now, most people have heard uh, the saying, uh, seeing is believing. Who's heard that before? Seeing is believing. But it's actually the opposite, you guys. It's believing is seeing. So the way that this part of your brain works is, it's like a filter. And what it does is, it filters in what matches the files in your money thermostat. Or your love thermostat. Remember, I help everybody with everything. So any kind of thermostat you have, this part of your brain filters it in. So here's a great example. Have you ever bought a new car? And then all of a sudden, you're driving the car, and then you see that car everywhere. So everywhere, and the, the same color and the same model, and you're like, oh my God, that's my car, right? Why does that happen? Did everyone buy the car the same time you did? No, those cars were always there. You just filtered them out because they didn't match a file in your thermostat. So now that you have added that file to your thermostat, this part of your brain said, oh, this is important, filter it in. So now you've filtered it into your reality through your reticular activation system because you believe it, you own it, you have emotions about it, you focused on it, you gave it some energy and you created a file by doing that. So now this part of your brain, it's like a Google search. It's like, oh, we have a file for this, and this person enjoys it, wants it, likes it. There's energy here, find more. 
So that's your reticular activation system. Then the next part of your brain that I want to talk about, and this part's really, really important, you guys, and this is where most people struggle. This part of your brain is the amygdala. And most people, when I teach them about the thermostat and the reticular activation system, they go, oh, I just got to change my mind. I just got to change my story. Yes, you do. But we have a fail-safe mechanism called the amygdala. And the amygdala's job is to protect our reality. We can't just go around willy-nilly changing our reality anytime we want. We would be cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. We cannot do that. So this part of our brain is like a firewall, and it makes us feel, and some of you might be feeling it right now, fear, doubt, and anxiety. Anytime we try to change our brain files, anytime we try to change our thermostat, this part of our brain floods our body with chemicals that make us feel fear, doubt, and anxiety. And when we feel that, what we do is we go, oh, I'm going to go back to my comfort zone. Oh, I'm going to go back to what I know. And that's not for me. Oh, that's too hard to do. Yeah, I don't think that'll work for me. Yeah, no. And you think it's you, but it's literally your programming is making you have these thoughts. Now, this part is wild. Um, I do a lot of presenting with my husband. You guys, we work as a couple. And he always says this. And he's not here, so I'll, I'll say it for him. Your brain even sends you audio messages. You get audio messages from your brain that are like, are you sure you want to do that? That seems crazy. I don't know if that's right. And then you hear this voice in your head and you're like, well, then this is, this is not for me. I, I can't do this. So I tell my clients, what were you thinking? Yes, what were you thinking? What are you thinking, right? You get that thought. So I, I always tell my clients, think of it like this. You're going to feel uncomfortable. And think of it like when you, when you delete a program from a computer. Whenever you delete a program from a computer, so think of our brains as a, we're a computer, right? And we're gonna delete some old programs. And in my coaching, what I do is I help people delete old programs and then I add new files, okay? I help them add new files. So when, you're, when, you're, when you go to delete a program from a computer, you get a pop-up window. Does anyone know what that pop-up window says? Are you sure you want to delete this program? <laughs> and right, are you sure? Our brains are doing the same thing. That's what the fear, doubt, and anxiety is. It's our body and our mind saying, are you sure you wanna delete this program? Are you sure? And I'm gonna tell you guys, as you're doing this work, that's gonna happen a couple of times. You're gonna get you're gonna get that pop-up window. Are you sure you want to delete this program? And you have to keep deleting the program. And the way that you keep deleting the program is you focus back on what you want. You focus back on your new story. You focus back on your gratitude. You focus back on the idea that I receiving is wonderful. Receiving brings joy to others. Business is an exchange of love. I'm not in competition with anyone. I'm unique in all the world and what I'm giving and sharing is amazing and they want it. It's an invitation to play with me. Doesn't that feel better than I'm trying to get something from somebody and I hope they want it and I need it and I gotta have it so that I can pay my bills. Like that's it's totally different energy, right? And so when you have that energy, something amazing happens you start to attract, which brings me to the law of attraction. So most people think that law of attraction is just positive thinking and be happy and happy things will come to you. And that, that's true to a degree, but I love science. So when I started studying law of attraction, what I learned was that as human beings, we are light energy that's vibrating. We are light. We are divine. We are sparks of the divine, right? So when we look at us under an electron microscope, we are light energy that's vibrating. And that vibration is coming from our thoughts and our emotions. And it's being emitted from our bodies and it's going out into the universe and it's connecting 
with people, situations, and circumstances that match our vibration. So if I have a brain file in my filing cabinet that says, I'm not worthy, that's going to be in my vibration. And I'm going to attract people who treat me like I'm not worthy. And not because they're bad people, but they're a match to my vibration. They're being a mirror for me. They're showing me how I feel about me. Does that make sense? So I'm going to tell you guys a quick story. Um, I, this was just amazing to me. I've been coaching. I've been life coaching for about 22 years. And I coach on a lot of different things. And one day I was coaching this young lady and she was describing her childhood to me because I do a lot of inner child work with people. She was describing her childhood to me and she was telling me about growing up in Jamaica and sitting on this wood floor and, you know, listening. Her mother left her with someone that was taking care of her. And as she described this scene, I had this out of body experience and it took me back to my childhood. And I grew up in foster care. And I was in a foster home where um, the family was lovely. It was a lovely family. And they had a daughter. And her name was Charlotte. You guys, I'm 55 years old. And I remember Charlotte's name from me being five. Why? A file, brain file. This is why I remember Charlotte. Charlotte was their daughter. And she had a beautiful bedroom with a canopy bed with little roses on her canopy matching her bedspread. And she wore lace socks and white dresses. And she had bows in her ponytails. And I wore hand-me-downs and broken down sneakers. And my clothes didn't fit me. And I didn't have any bows in my hair. And I got to sit on the floor, the wood floor. This is why it got triggered. It triggered a brain file. I got to sit on the wood floor and watch her practice piano. So that story is me as a child seeing there's someone that's beautiful and fabulous and getting all of this abundance and beauty and I am not. I am less than. I am here in their home because my parents can't take care of me and I don't have nice things. So as a child, I decided from that experience that there was something wrong with me and that I wasn't good enough. And it made me struggle with money my whole life. I worked hard. I worked two jobs. I worked three jobs. I could never hold on to money. And that's one of the reasons I started studying money because I wanted to learn how to get myself out of this mindset that was triggering me. So I had to go in I had to go in and I had to delete those files. I had to reframe them for myself. I had to look at it through adult eyes. The foster parents weren't doing anything wrong, of course. That was their daughter. They loved her. They were taking care of her. They were doing wonderful things for her, but they didn't realize how it was impacting me watching. They didn't realize that the other children that they were bringing in that didn't have the same level of care and beauty in their lives were being programmed that there was something wrong with them. And so I've had to work on this programming my whole life. And I'll tell you guys, I learned to attract money. I learned to ask the universe for what I want and have it come to me. I, I was just telling Jennifer before everybody got on the call here, I decided um, about three years ago, I'm talent. I'm not working hard anymore. I'm just showing up and do what I do. I coach, I speak, and I love. That's what I do. I'm not working hard anymore. And last year, uh, my husband and I attracted. We didn't go find it. We didn't ask anybody to give it to us. We didn't work hard for it. We attracted a television show. And when we were on this television show, at the end of it, the producers said, hey, would you guys like to do a podcast? And they manage everything for us. They pay us for this podcast. They edit it, they market it, they do everything for us. We're just talent. We attracted that because we changed our money thermostat. Before, I would have never said, I'm just talent. I would have said, I've got to do 100 million things um, to prove my worthiness. And I've got to work five years and 10 days and eight nights and not sleep <laughs> so that I could be successful. But I don't want to do that. I want to use my personal power and my personal energy to get what I want out of life. 
And so I tell you guys about your thermostat because I want you to understand you didn't do anything wrong. You can attract money the same way that you work hard for money. And working is amazing. I love the work that I do. But I know the work that I do attracts more money when my energy is positive about it, when my energy is good about it. So think about this. I want you to think about the energy, especially those of you who are in sales or interacting with people and you have to ask them for money and talk about money. Think about this. If you have anywhere in, in your energy field that you feel uncomfortable with money, then what will happen is that will show up in the conversation and they'll feel it they'll feel it and then they won't want to give you the money. You'll say something or you'll sabotage yourself and then they'll, they'll feel it and they'll be like, mm, I don't know. But when you have the energy of money is just energy, it's currency, it's love, it's fabulous, they feel that and then they want to give you the money. Uh, here's another quick story. So uh, I do a lot of coaching and sometimes people will call me for discovery calls. And one time I was doing a discovery call and I was talking to my client about my fees and what we would be doing and what the coaching was about. And I heard myself say this. Have you ever like heard yourself say something or watched yourself do something and went, whoa, did I just do that? Right. So this is what I did. You guys watch this. I was like, yeah. So, you know, um, so, yeah, that's what the coaching is. And it's going to it's going to be this many sessions. And this is the fee, you know, because we have to charge money because we're a business and, you know, we have to. We have to um, we have to make money to stay in business. What <laughs> the heck is she doing? And you know what the client said? Yes, of course. <laughs> yes, of course you do. <laughs> and he ended up signing up with me, but I saw myself. I saw the sabotage. I saw the fear. I saw the worthiness issue. And so everyone has brain files everyone has a part of themselves that feels a little bit uncomfortable about money right so now that you know that you have all these mechanisms in your brain i want you to use them for your benefit so i work with a lot of doctors okay i work with a lot of doctors so i'm going to tell you guys to do it how i have my doctors do it number one you have to come up with a new money story. First of all, review your money story. Um, make a list of your family stories and the beliefs about money. Like some of you said, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. Like write all that crap down. Like just write it all down. Don't judge it. Don't be mad at it at all. It's okay. It is what it is. Remember, it was handed to you in childhood and on television. Uh, while you guys are writing that down, I want to share this with you. The other night I was watching this uh, series on TV and it was talking about how um, television producers create television shows around what's going on in the world. We're actually being programmed by television, you guys. That's what it's called television programming. So be very careful about what you're taking in because what you're taking in, what you're listening to on the radio, what you're watching on television, what you're, what you're reading. You're creating brain files. You're creating your reality. And I'll tell you guys the secret to creating your reality. Like I'll give you all my goodies. I'll give it all to you because I want you guys to have it, right? The secret to getting what you want is bombarding your system with information that matches what you want. When I started doing my money study, I read every book on money. I talked to every person, every client that was a multimillionaire or billionaire. I'm like, how do you feel about money? What do you think about it? What do you do? What, do you, what, are, your, what are your systems? Right? And you know what I was doing? I was taking in brain files that match abundance. Does that make sense? So let me give it to you this way. If you want more love, you need to focus on love. If you want more money, you focus on money in a positive way. If you want better health, you focus on great health, right? Like that's literally how we change our minds. But what happens is that amygdala sends in that fear, doubt, and anxiety chemicals. And then we go, oh, I'm not sure I want to delete this program. Let me go back to the eating cake, sitting on the couch, feeling sorry for myself because I didn't have enough money today, <laughs> right? Meanwhile, 
we watched 18 programs about, you know, murder and lack of money and poverty, <laughs> whatever the case may be, right? And then now you guys, on top of that, we have social media. And we have social media where we're watching everybody's lives. And I'm gonna tell y'all a secret, most of it's a BS. <laughs> It's not real. And then we're and then we're comparing ourselves. And we're like, oh my God, they're doing so good. How come I'm not there? It's most of it's BS. I'll tell you, I'll tell you all the secrets, you guys. I work with dentists, and so many of my doctors are like, um, and a lot of my doctors are in Beverly Hills, so it's very high end. Um, a lot of them are like, oh, you know, I want to be insta famous and I want influencers and all these great people. And I have some doctors who are working with people. And can I tell you what happens behind the scenes? The influencers are getting free crap from people. They don't, they're not, they're not buying anything. People are giving them free crap to show it on their social media so that they think that they're wealthy. And then you'll want to be like them and then go buy it. It's advertising. And they're getting it for free. They don't really have it like that. So don't compare yourself to people. Please do not compare yourself to people. Because it's not, it's not real. Okay? So stay in your lane. So you've written down your money story. So here's what I want you to do. Whatever stories you have written down, if they are negative, tell the opposite story. If you have written down money doesn't grow on trees, then I want you to write down next to that money is energy and energy is all around me. It's just energy, it's currency. And when I align myself with the frequency of money, I attract money. Does that make sense? See how am I doing on time? Okay, I've got about 15 minutes to see what else I wanna give you guys. Um, so create the new money story. And then if you can create a mantra for you, if you can create a mantra for yourself, like I walk around like this, you guys, if you guys notice all my energy, one of the reasons I have all this energy is because emotions are the gas of attraction and I love attracting. So the universe picks up energy. So if I just go, yeah, I want money. That signal is not gonna get picked up. If I'm like, yeah, money is everywhere. I love money and money loves me, honey. Actually, I'll tell you guys, I just had somebody put some money in my PayPal account. I don't even know where it came from. I just saw it drop in right now. So that's how I roll. <laughs> that's how I roll. It's energy, you guys, okay? Um, and also, Create some mantra for yourself. Jennifer, I gave you, did I give you a, uh, did I give you a affirmation for them? A audio affirmation? Did I send you that? No, not yet, but ooh, let's I let will. come with that. I'll send it to you. So I'm going to, I'm going to help you guys with this. Okay. I'm going to give Jennifer a audio money affirmation that you guys can say every day. It has instructions and that will help you guys with your mantra. Okay. And then the next piece is ask the universe to help you. You guys, the universe is part of us. We are the universe. We are made of the same things as the universe and we do not tap into our superpower. So think of like, we're an extension of the universe. We just need to plug into the universe. And the way that we do that is we just say, this is what I want universe. Thank you, more please. And when you receive it, notice that you're receiving it. So I'm gonna give you guys another exercise. Play with your reticular activation system. Just like you realize you bought a new car and all of a sudden you saw that car everywhere, ask the universe for something simple that you could believe. So, cause you gotta build belief. It's not easy, you guys. It's not easy to change your beliefs. I know that, I work with people. I, that's why they work with me because it's not easy. So I don't want to give you the illusion you're going to walk away from this call and be like, I got it. I can do it. I want you to work at it and know you have to work at it and be okay with having to work at it. It's fine. So the work that you're going to do is play. I like my work to be play. So play with the universe. Ask the universe for something simple. So something like a cup of coffee. I want someone to offer to buy me a cup of coffee today. I want to see purple hearts. I want to see flowers. And then when you see a flower, I saw one flower, count it. And then when you see another one, count it. 
And you'll start to notice like, oh my goodness, I'm playing seeing flowers everywhere. My reticular activation system works. It's awesome. Um, I did the coffee thing when I first started. I I said, you know what? On my way to work, I was on the train. I used, like when I worked in downtown LA, I used to take the train. Um, and I asked the universe for someone to buy me a cup of coffee in the morning on the train. I was like, all right, universe, today, someone's going to offer to buy me a cup of coffee. So I was like, this is exciting. I can't wait to see who it is. I was trying to guess who it was. I was like, I think it's going to be the lady down the hall. She's so nice. She always buys me coffee. It's going to be her. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to guess how the universe is going to work it out with me. Right. So I am on the train and my cell phone rings and I answer my phone and it says, is this Melanie Clark? I say, yes. Who's calling? Um, we're calling from IHOP. You put your business card in our bowl and you won breakfast for 10 people. You guys, what comes with breakfast? Coffee. I not only attracted one cup of coffee, I attracted 10 cups of coffee. And that's the thing about playing with the universe that I love so much. Like use your energy and use your connection to the universe. What I love about it so much is the universe can bring things to you in ways that you never saw coming. Like, did you see what I did? My brain went linear, right? It went, who do, who is close to me? Who's in the closest proximity that I know that I can predict? The universe don't play like that. The universe is like, what is the most efficient, best, biggest way that I could give you what you want? Boom, you put your card, there you go. That's how it works. We are focusing mechanisms. We focus on what we want and the universe attracts things. We're in partnership with the universe. Use your partner, work with your partner. Uh, okay, I'm almost done, I'm almost done. Cause I want you guys to ask questions. Um, the last thing that I wanna tell you, and I know you guys have probably heard this, make sure you have a gratitude ritual in your life say thank you to the universe look for things to be grateful for gratitude and appreciation are so powerful it's a vibration and when you live in that vibration that becomes your vibration so let's think about it if you're vibrating gratitude and appreciation you have to attract things to feel grateful for and appreciative for. And that includes your money. It's just an energy. You're all worthy. You're all divine. You're all perfect the way that you are. Everything that you're doing in your life is your unique life experience that you showed up in this physical body to share with the world. Be proud of that. And don't make the money about whether or not you're good enough. Make the money about an exchange of love. That's all that it is. And be grateful that you have the gifts that you have, that you're in the position that you're in to serve your fellow man. Because when we serve, when we serve from our hearts, that heart energy connects with their heart energy and that exchange just happens naturally and beautifully. Expect that. If you expect that, that's exactly what you're gonna attract. So we're at about 11.40. Jennifer told me 11.45. You guys feel like you can do this? Do you feel like you can change your money thermostat? Write your new story? Like, you got this. Like, you can totally, totally do it. So, um, Jen, do you want to open it up for questions or anything while we have the rest of our time? Oh, my gosh. Okay, show of hands. Who is, like, feeling so pumped? Like, I feel so rich right now. Like, let's just all go out and make extra money, right? Yes. Making more money. Vanya's up for it. Karen's up for it. Yeah, Latasha. Yes. So I'm let's do curious. it. I, I want to start off, and please, guys, um, if you have a question, let me know by raising your hand or put it in the chat. But I am <laughs> send me the money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. No. Okay. You had you had foster care as a child. You had a lot of hurdles mm -hmm. to overcome to get you where you are now. You started yes. studying the brain and the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you? Is it a constant ever flowing thing? Or did you, you find if you devoted like 
five years, 10 years? You know, like, what was the journey like for you? You know, um, I start, it started right away because it's mindset shift. And as soon as I shifted my mindset, my energy changed and I started attracting new people. So think about this, manifestations come through other people. They don't fall from the sky, right? Because we would never believe that. Like I actually believe they could, but our belief system won't allow us to believe that. <laughs> so we ha it has to come in a way that we can, we can take in. So that's why the time thing, and, and here's the other thing, we're not in control of the how or the when. We're just in charge of the what, okay? So this is what happened. I learned about this in about 2005, 2006, and I brought it to work with me in the dental office. And so I started focusing on goals and what I did, I was doing it for my boss. And what I did was I wrote down, and you guys should do this too, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you this, write down your goal, your money goal. And I like to break my money goals up into weekly and not monthly because in we, human brain loses focus every seven to 10 seconds. We'll forget, we'll forget our goal by the end of the month. So I did a weekly goal for myself and in the office and I started attracting the goal. I want, I started saying things like, oh, I need um, somebody on the schedule that needs a crown. And I'd be like, all right, universe, have somebody call that needs a crown. Somebody break a tooth today. <laughs> and the phone would ring and somebody would call and say, I broke my tooth, I need a crown. <laughs> and so I started like seeing it happen at work. And then I did it for myself. You guys, I wrote down, and this happened within one year. I wrote down that I wanted to be a speaker in dentistry and that I wanted to make way more money. I wanted to triple my income. And I wanted to teach uh, energy work in the dental field. I wrote that down. And one day my sales rep came in and said, I don't know what you're doing in this office, but you guys are killing it. You're meeting goal, you're bonusing every month. And all my other offices are struggling. What are you doing? And I said, I'm life coaching my team and I'm teaching law of attraction. And then she said this, can you teach that to other doctors? And I said, yes. And you guys, I was scared. I was so scared. My amygdala kicked in. I was like, who the hell do you think you are to tell doctors what to do? And she wants you to go to Beverly Hills. You're just a little foster care girl. What's happening here? But I said yes anyway. And I showed up to that talk and I just had bullet points on a piece of paper. I just spoke from my heart. And one of the doctors said, I want to hire you. I'll pay. He said this, you guys, I'll pay you whatever you want. I didn't even know what I wanted. And, and the dental company paid me $2,000 to speak for an hour. My mind was blown. I thought I had won the lottery, right? I thought I had won the, won the lottery at that time. I was done. I was like, oh, I attracted that. I'm great. But it, I, the universe was not done with me. So the doctor kept asking for me, asking for me. I was scared. I was like, what does he want? I'm married. Is he trying to take me out on a date? I, no, stop. Uh-uh. <laughs> And then, and then my, my friend said, he wants you to consult for him. I said, I don't know how to be a consultant. She said, yes, you do. Just talk to him. And I took his call. Watch this, you guys. Watch my money energy. He said, uh, yeah, when can you come to my office? I'll pay you whatever you want. And I said, well, I have Fridays available. It was Wednesday. He said, okay, I'll see you Friday. I was like, wait, 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 wait. Do you want to know what I'm going to do? He said, I don't care. I just want you to come. I said, I'll feel better if I tell you. And then I said, I'm going to run reports, I'm going to interview your staff, and then I'll put together a program and a proposal. And he said, okay, great, I'll see you Friday. I was like, wait, 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 um, do you want to know how much I charge? And he said, I don't care what you charge, I'm going to pay you whatever you want. But I couldn't accept that. <laughs> I couldn't take it. So I was like, um, I'll feel better if I tell you what I'm going to charge. I'll be there four hours and I'm going to charge you $2,000. And he said, okay, great, see you Friday. But I didn't say it like, I got, I'm lying. Let me tell you guys the truth. This is what I did. I said, God, it'll, I'll see you and it'll be $2,000. <laughs> and he said, he said, what? I said, $2,000. <laughs> he said, excuse me? And I said, uh, <clears throat> $2,000. Oh my gosh. And and then and then afterward, you wish you had, had boops it up, didn't you? Because he was like, okay, that's well, fine. Like, damn yeah, it. Uh, but this is what ended up happening. This is what he hired me for the $2,000. That was the assessment fee. 
And then I ended up charging him $5,000 to implement. He hired me to come in his office every week. And he told everyone in Beverly Hills about me. And within six months, I had to quit my job because I had so many Beverly Hills dentists knocking on my door to work with me that I started a consulting business and left my boss. And when I left my job, my boss said, don't leave me. Okay, I'll be, you be my consultant too. And he hired me as a consultant and I kept my full salary bonuses and benefits. Carol, oh my God, round of applause, right? Like who wants that to happen in their lives? Oh my gosh, Melanie, yes. oh my gosh, we could have you all day. Oh my gosh, okay, so Karen, Karen, you wrote your question in the chat, but I think it would be great if you read it to her. And I, would, I would love to just add to what Melanie says. My husband is a personal chef, so he goes in people's homes and cooks. <laughs> And he deals with a lot of personal assistants because you don't actually talk to your clients in this. You talk through another person, right? Yes. And, yes. Uh, you know, he says, I haven't raised my prices for this client in, you know, like three or four years. And I said, well, you should raise them. Mm -hmm. And he said, I don't want to lose my client. And I said, that's why you should raise them. Mm -hmm. he finally, after like six months, you know, said, I'm going to raise my rates. And the personal assistant got the email and sent it back to him and says, you didn't raise them enough. Mm -hmm. yes. He was going to get fired. And she said, you didn't raise it enough. Try again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? yeah. So you don't understand. These people don't see this money, right? In some and they don't see it the they same. It, they don't even see it. And you're freaking out about it and pushing things away. So I just yeah. want to just to double your story down, Melanie. It's yeah. amazing what happens when you ask the universe and they tell you stuff. Yes. And you put yourself out there. And you know what I found, Karen? That's a great story is when I have asked for a larger fee and someone said they can't do it, I bless them and release them. And right behind them comes someone who can. So I'm not afraid to lose clients. It's that fear. It's that fear that holds you back. You you got to be, you got to not care. And part of that comes to with managing your money. I always keep a savings now. I learned that. I learned, you know what? You have to have a cushion for yourself so that you don't get into fear and you don't get into performance anxiety for people because you need money to pay rent or whatever. I, I keep money. And I honor money. And so I treat money with respect because I know that if I don't, then it is going to take me back to a fear energy. And that's not good. So you don't have to be afraid. What you want exists. You you just have to believe that. Right. And and you have to learn to believe stuff, you guys. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know how to describe that to you. You have to learn how to believe it. I still struggle. Like I was just thinking when you were saying, Jennifer, like I'll say to my husband, I manage our finances and I'll be like, we're eating out, out a lot. We need to cut back on all that eating out and doing what we're doing. And every time I say it, he says this, why? I don't want to. I enjoy that. It raises my vibration. Let's just make more money. And I'm like, yeah, why didn't I think about it? <laughs> well, I got, I got right. Like I got to adopt that from Anthony. Yes, I need to do yes. that because I, I too, I'm watching the budget like a hawk because I am enjoying mm -hmm. money right now. I am so enjoying. Yeah. But you're yeah. right. Why not just make more money? Hello, hello. He's like one more client. Just get one more client. We can add one more client. We can. We're gonna sell a program. Like who cares? I like going out to eat. I like having fancy drinks and for lunch. I'm like, yeah, I do too. <laughs> All right, let's make more money. And every time he says it, we make more money. So I now I don't even say we need to cut back. I just go to him and go, we need to make more money. Do you have some ideas? Because money is ideas. My, it's ideas and products and services. You guys, okay, one more quick story because I don't want to keep you guys because I know we got to go. Um, one day I thought, I want to make, I want like a chunk of money. I want like $15,000 because I want to pay some stuff off. How can I get $15,000? And I just kept like, it's going to come, it's going to come, it's going to come. And when I went to bed, I was like, all right, spirit, give me an idea, $15,000 idea. And I went to sleep. I woke up in the morning and I had this thought. One of my female dentists kept asking me to start a women's group for women dentists. I'm going to do that. 
So I just put together a quick group and said, if you're a woman dentist and you want to talk about life and kids and running a business and how to be more successful. And I sent it out to a few women dentists. I charged a thousand dollars for this group. How many do you think signed up? 15. 16. Oh, okay. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Melanie. Just like that, $16,000. And they did the group for a year. I made an extra $16,000 a month for a year. I quit the group. I got bored with it. I got tired of it. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Because it was at night and it was going too late. And I missed my husband. I was like, I want to be home with my husband. <laughs> I'll find another way to make money. That He's more important than being out making that money. Right? You see? Oh. Yes, you guys. So use your power. Use your energy. And when you get in front of a client, just think about your heart and think about, I love you and I love this exchange. And I'm happy you're going to give me money. And I'm happy to give you this product and service. And you're going to be thrilled with it. This is good for both of us. I, oh. I have a mantra. I have a belief. I say this all the time. I want what's best for everyone involved, not just me, everyone involved. That is amazing. Oh okay. my gosh, guys, are, show of hands. Are you just loving the, the golden nuggets she's pouring onto us? This is amazing, Yay. right? Right? Yay. Is everybody finding some amazing value from what Stephanie brought us? I'm sorry, Melanie, what did I say? <laughs> Melanie, okay. Melanie us. I don't know. Um, okay, Melanie, we need to know yes. how to get more yeah. Melanie. <laughs> okay, so uh, my brand is The Amazing Clarks, because like I told you guys, I work with my husband most of the time. So our website is theamazingclarks.com, and we have a podcast that we talk about all this energy stuff and relationships, and it's The Amazing Clarks Podcast, and you can listen to it anywhere you listen to podcasts. Um, we have a book out, Crack the Code. It's a relationship book, but it also talks about all the brain science I discussed here today. Um, and then all of our social media handles are The Amazing Clarks. So if you notice, she said, that was amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, our clients started saying we were amazing, calling us The Amazing Clarks. So we, we received it, we owned it, and that is our brand. We are The Amazing Clarks. Yes, they and I, I wish you guys could all get to know uh, Anthony, her other half, not her better. Okay, half. Listen to the podcast today, Will. Listen to the podcast, but then also too, Renee and I had them on Connect uh, the the Marriage Plus Business vlog that we do, and that mm -hmm. was super fun. They are on fire. So yes. I hope you all enjoyed this. Do did if you don't mind, I'd love to have you comment. What value did you get out of this, Vanya? If you don't mind me calling on you, what value did you get? Oh, take yourself off mute, sweetie pie. And then Karen can go. Yes. Okay, what oh, value? Is awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I got reintroduced to my my money story <laughs> that I forgot about. I wasn't even thinking mm -hmm. about it, but I think it's a program running in the background, you know, like mm -hmm. malware in your brain mm -hmm. <laughs> because yes. I didn't even like I have not been um thinking about it I you know but you it just came up and I was like oh my gosh that's right I actually mm -hmm. I believe this and for me it's you must work hard for money like nearly kill yourself mm -hmm. work hard yeah you know oh. that's don't yeah. do it don't that, do I know it. I know <laughs> <laughs> I, and enjoy I, your I, life I've gone through burnout a couple of times in my business yeah. and I did not I had this big aha because I did not make that connection and mm -hmm. I thought it was just I was not self-managing you know like that's mm. why burnout but no it's this story it's this background programming and I need to take yeah. care of that <laughs> yes. delete 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 <laughs> Yes. Yes. I need my antivirus to come in and get rid of it. You know, Vanny, I got that same bit, but the part was delete old, insert new. You new. Got, yes. yes. If you just yes. delete the old, right? You're, you're you need still a new one. one. Fish out of right. water. Right? Yeah, we so, got to fill that yeah. space. Yes. Yeah. So nothing else delete bad comes in new. there. Delete. Yeah. yeah. Delete. I got it. <laughs> yeah. And remember and write and write put your new story somewhere where you could see it all the time. 
Totally. So that you remember, because you'll forget and you'll fall back into the slumber. That's what the, the, the thermostat does. It takes you right back to it and you'll wake up and be like, oh wait, I'm here again. What happened? So yeah. put it somewhere where you could see it so that you keep having to interact with it, okay? Right. Yes, it's, thank it's you. Like, okay, I'm used to, like just, just, I'm used to seeing X amount in my bank account. Well, mm -hmm. raise it. Raise Have it. it. I'm used to seeing yeah. X amount. And then it, guess what? For me, myself, I've been telling myself, I am getting smaller and the scale is getting, you know, smaller numbers. Is mm -hmm. it reality yet? No, but that's Whoa. okay. I know it will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, the more you tell yourself eventually that, you'll want to do the things that will make it happen. Right. Because so your body will push you like, you know what? We need to go for a walk. Exactly. I feel like I need to go for a walk. I'm antsy because you've been bombarding your system with the scales going down. So your body's like, all right, well then let's do something to make that happen. For sure. That's what happens. We're, we're, it's our command center, what we tell ourselves. So true. Oh my gosh, yes. guys, I'm so glad you had fun. DJ, did you get some, did you get some value out of this? I know you've been working your business. Did you get some value? Yeah. Yep, yep, thumbs up. Latasha, did you get some value? Yay, I know Denise did, and she loved the the word pick, malware, Vanya. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Aviv, yes, 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 and Jenny's on there. This is great, guys, I'm so excited. Okay, so today was just day one. We're just doing this in hour-long sessions. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for joining us for day one with Melanie Clark of The Amazing <laughs> Clark. Tomorrow is going to be Patrick Dolder, the owner of Pals Ocala Auto Repair. He's in Ocala, Florida, and he's going to show us how to calculate your return on investment with marketing. Like if, you, if you're sinking money into advertising and you don't know how it's tracking and you really want to get a read on what is working and what isn't, come to tomorrow's session. I'm going to be blown away, everyone. So thank you, Melanie. Yes. You are, you're you welcome. Are, you are. It's your brand. Girl, you are. <laughs> <laughs> phenomenally amazing and we love you thank you for being oh the my pleasure my absolute pleasure i'm i'm happy to serve yes. nice to meet you all thank you for all the love and energy i felt you all so much thank you appreciate you